So let's do non-maximal suppression to get rid of those extra lines. So instead of taking all the points greater than the threshold, we'll take points that are local maxima. We can find the local maxima by doing a grayscale dilation. So if this is our huff space with the scores vertically, um, this is a slice through that, say horizontally. A grayscale dilation um, takes the local maximum within the size of the structuring element. So this would be the dilation of the values of H with a structuring element of, say, uh, with 5. We can then test to see where the dilation equals the original values of H using this expression here. Um, basically where H equal equals for a test for equality the dilation of H with a structuring element. Here I'm using um, a box of ones size M by N. So that returns uh, true wherever I have points that are equal. And finally I'll also want points that are greater than the threshold. So I'll end that result with the test for H greater than threshold. So I'll put the result into something called H peaks, which has a value of true wherever um, I have both of these conditions satisfied. Um, so let's put that into our program here. Um, so once I find H, I will look for the maxima, the local maxima. Uh, let's say size 10 by 10. Um, and then I'll um, find the peaks by ending that with uh, h greater than threshold. I have to put this up here. And, and then I'll go ahead and find non-zero values in H peaks. So, so this does much better. I still get two lines here, but only one in the other direction. If I were to display the um, H peaks then, Um, I just have uh, very few peaks, like two points here, and looks like three points here. Um, now MATLAB does have Huff transform functions in the image processing toolbox. Um, the one, the basic one, is called Huff. You pass in a black and white image of edge points. It returns the uh, parameter space um, and the vectors of theta and rho. It can look for peaks using this command uh, huff peaks, returns the uh, locations of the peaks up to num peaks of them, and then it can also extract uh, lines from that in terms of um, uh, the line segments uh, in the form of the endpoints as well as the row and theta. So here's an example on this image. Um, so it actually goes back and um, you know fits these lines, not fits them, it, it um, only draws the lines to the extent where um, where they appear in the image. That's why we have segments and not infinitely long lines. So I mentioned that the Huff transform can be used for things other than lines, actually any parameterized curve, for example, circles. So the way you would do a uh, other curve is you write the equation of the curve. So the equation of a circle is um, x minus x0 squared plus y minus y0 squared equals r squared. So this means we need to find um, three values um, for x0, uh, y0, and r. So that's the third dimension of our um, uh, parameter space. But otherwise, the um, 
processing is the same. We loop over uh, all x and all y. If I have an edge point at x, y, I have to loop over two of the other uh, parameters that I'm searching for. Let's say I loop over uh, x0 and y0. Calculate um, the value of r corresponding to that, just using the equation above. And then increment h um, at the cell corresponding to x0, y0, r, and then just end. So very simple processing. Unfortunately, it does take a lot of uh, four loops. Um, basically, for, um, for three parameters, I need to loop over two of them and calculate the third. Let's do an example here of finding a parabola. So parabolas have the form y um, equals ax squared. I center it at x0, y0, like that. So I need to search for those three parameters. And to make processing faster, I'll limit the range over which I search the value of a, you know, because I know about the size of these uh, parabolas that I'm looking for. So the pseudocode will be, um, again, we have this three-dimensional parameter array. We search over the whole edge image. If, if we get a point, we uh, loop over all values of a that we're interested in. We loop over all values of x0, which will be the whole image. We compute the value of y0, and we increment the value of a. And then we search for peaks in that uh, array there. So <clears throat> this is the code that does that. Um, we're going to read in an image, do canny edge detection. Here's our values of a. I called them r here. Looks like I have six of them that I want to try. Um, here I loop over the, um, well, this is a little different way of finding it. I, f I use the find function to get <coughs> all the edge points in the image and put the coordinates into y index and x index. So I have a loop over that instead of over the whole image. Um, but then I loop over um, the values of r, loop over values of x, calculate values of y, find the um, correct, um, well, I just round y0 off, and that will be the index into a, and I increment a. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. Um, so I'll start a new function. Just copy that code. And Okay, so here is the original image, here's the edge image, here is one slice of the parameter array. Okay, so the parameter array again is three-dimensional. Um, it's size 343 by 512 by 6. So for example, if I show um, what A of uh, the, the second, or say the third slice. Okay, it looks like that. Um, let's say this is the fourth slice, and so forth. So they look similar, but again, these are stacked up uh, on top of one another, so we have to find peaks in this uh, three-dimensional array. Okay, so 
the way we do that is similar to the case of the 2D array. Namely, we want to find peaks that are local maxima and are greater than a threshold. Except this time we have to look over a three-dimensional neighborhood and we can use imdilate to do that with a 3D structuring element. So dilation again finds the local maximum with the neighborhood of that size.